years. Yeah. But, you know, there's some legends out there mm -hmm. that, you know, have been doing it so long that you can't remember gospel almost without their touch in a lot of the great things. So, Robert, we've got a great interview with us today. Who do we have with us today, my friend? Yeah, we have this young man who I used to always hear his name mentioned, and I would read it in credits, and I would wonder, who in the world is this jazzy guy? Who? Very unique name. I said, someday. If God be for you. I'm going to meet this young man. Who can be against you? And you know what? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes. So <laughs> we zoom in years later, and I had an opportunity uh -huh. to meet and establish a relationship with this legend. But, but, but you know what? As you get ready to finish the introduction, talk about when you wouldn't eat your chicken wing around him. Um, <laughs> this gentleman has, is probably one of the longest living African-American vegans that you know that we know <laughs> him him and Lonnie Morgan yes um and i think it's awesome because we are now learning and we should have known before how important it is to take care of our bodies mm -hmm. we can sing dance and shout and speak in tongue but nah, the nah, nah, temple but the temple is very important and if we've had know, we've losing so many people yes. um unnecessarily unnecessary so we thank god for people like him who god has positioned to help us do better, because when we know better, we do better. Amen? Amen, amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, this man is known, if you look on any credit with Verity Records, Zamba, you will, will see Smith. this man's name. He was the one who signed Vanessa Bell, mm -hmm. something on the inside, to Zamba. John P. Key to Zamba. This Roll is the John. one and only Yolanda um, Donnie McClurklin, Albertina, Vicky Winans was on that label. Mm -hmm. Byron Cage was on that label. Mm -hmm. Brett Br Clark, Brown Clark was on that label. And the list goes on and on. Richard Smallwood. Yeah, I went by the label. This is the man that had the master plan and the Midas yes. touch. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the 2016 Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award yes. winner from President Barack Obama. Barack. Nobody than the one and only. Dr. James Jazzy Jordan, welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show with Dr. LT and Robert O'Dean. Well, guys, it's so good to be here with you. Let me just say this. Um, you know, you guys have, uh, you guys inspire me so much. You really do. And, wow. you know, it's hard when you've seen a lot, been a lot of places to get inspired, but you guys inspire me, you know. And let me tell you something about Dr. LT that, and, uh, and Michelle that really, Blows my mind, mm -hmm. you know, because when they said, well, we're going to start this radio station, G-O-D.com. And I'm like, okay, okay. Why are you going to start a radio station? Nobody, you know, but again, it's like when you have a conviction and you have a belief about something, it doesn't matter who else buys into your dream. Come on. Because it's your dream. Come on. And God gave it to you. So I just want to uh, applaud them for having the foresight to yes. see what was needed yes. because when you take it, when you step out, you step off that curb. A lot of times you find you're alone and a bus may be coming. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, right. you got to look both ways, but step out, step out and follow your dreams because the worst thing in the world, I think is to leave this earth too soon Come on. and not have lived up to your accomplishments and all the things that you could do. I so, um, you know, and then Robert, you know, Dr. LT had a few other partners in the morning before you. Yeah. Okay. But then he got you and things just went to another level. So, I, you know, I thank God for you as well. And I thank God for meeting you as well, because you are a, um, how should I say it? You are a magnet. You just draw people to you. It's like, I'm, like when, you know, at first when we, when we first met, I was like, okay, okay, all right, okay, that's enough. But then, you know, then, then you realize that's not enough because this guy has so much to offer and so much to give. So I want, I want to give you, you know, I believe in giving people their flowers where they can smell them. You see, because everybody's not going to be like me. See, I don't that's get right. older. I get better. That's right. See? That's right. That's the way I look at it. I, I don't get older. I get better. Yes. You know what I mean? I, I You can look at pictures. I didn't even have any hair. Not got hair. 
<laughs> you, you got more hair now than you did on 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 some of your pictures earlier. That's what I'm saying to you. I I know that's what I'm saying. Well, well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tease him because you know uh, I have a picture of him. He's clean shaven. He 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 got he clean on the with head the black tuxedo. The, yeah, and, and I'm looking right at it. Then uh, you come back, you come back, and and he got a full set of hair and a, and a full beard. <laughs> But he aged and, backwards because he looks you know, just as young crazy, now that he did then. Crazy part is that, you know, I might shave it off tomorrow if I feel like it. Because yeah. I know, I know it'll go back. Of course. <laughs> yes. So I want, you know, I want to but, jump in. Sure. I, want to, I want to really jump in with you because, um, you know, we we need to start doing segments on a monthly basis where we're tapping in with you because there's so much that you are doing. And he offers. So um, I want to start, first of all, just asking the question, how did you even get into this thing called music? Right. Not just gospel music, but music Music, in period. Well, my first job in life at 10 years old was sweeping out my brother-in-law's record store. Mm. Okay. And I got bitten by the music bug at that point. I, and, you know, be honest with you, I saw album covers like of The Temptations and wow. whatnot. I was like, these guys are clean. That's, oh, my God. And I got I got just bitten by the music bug. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, I still look at that job now. And again, 10 years old, sweeping out the store, you know, what got 50 cent or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was the experience of a lifetime because just being around music and just seeing the power of music, music has so much power. You know, I, I went off to uh, the Air Force when I graduated from high school and then um, I came back and I had the GI Bill, start going to college. And it was taking too long because I knew what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I gotta wait four years before I go do what I gotta want to do. And well, let me and, ask you, know, you this question, just because you, you you went past it real quick. So you are a veteran. How how many years were you in the Air Force? And Air Force is the toughest branch to get into. So how long were you in the Air Force before that's you the, transitioned? Yeah, that's the educational one. Right, I was in the Air Force for four years. Okay, and I I went in the Air Force on purpose. And the reason I went in the Air Force is because you know, Air Force they drop bombs on people. Mm -hmm. And they fly away. Yeah. You know, the Marines, those are the brave guys. They, they go and take the beach. I didn't want to have anything to do with any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, or you be in the Navy and you got to be on a ship for six months at a time. I, I, could, I, I, I couldn't see myself doing that either. So I went in the Air Force for four years. And then um, one thing that I've always been blessed with is vision. Mm-hmm. I don't mean my eyesight either, mm -hmm. but my vision was after my four years was up, they offered me $10,000 cash money to reenlist. Wow. And I had never heard of $10,000, let alone seen $10,000. But I was like, no, I know that there's something else that God has for me and want me to do other than to stay in this Air Force because, I mean, I could have stayed in the Air Force and did nothing for 20 years and retired and right. had a pension, whatever, but I knew that there was so much more to do, so that's why it was uh, four years and out for me. Okay, and so being a veteran, uh, you come out, you, you, get, you have the GI Bill, mm -hmm. and uh, it was at a time that Everybody wasn't saying they love black people. Show what? <laughs> no, listen, let me tell you something. Not only didn't they didn't love black people, they didn't love they didn't love uh, service people. They didn't, you know, your military. Uh, uh, it, you know, it was just a really just like it is now. It was a very confusing time mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. because nobody knew what they wanted to really uh, uh demonstrate that they love because everything was like i'm against this i'm against that i'm against this so it was uh really a very confusing time for a lot of people but mm -hmm. the air force i'll tell you what the air force did me a really really great solid because it really changed my life forever and the reason i say that is because it taught me discipline mm -hmm. and it taught me that the small things are important because if you're working on an airplane if you leave out a couple of boats <laughs> you know, anything could happen. The engine, mm -hmm. the engine could fall out, anything. So it taught me that 
It's the little things that's important. See, we get these big goals in mind. Right. But you have to do the little things. Mm -hmm. You have yes. to take the little small steps yes. and make those work for you every day. Because, you see, it's really funny. It's about success. Success is, hab is a habit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you form a habit and you do it every day, you do it every day, you repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it. And then before you know, it, it's very easy. Right. You're not even really, you're not even pressing. Like you take the greatest athletes in the world. One thing the greatest athletes all have in common, they love to practice. Mm -hmm. And they go and they do their practice. Yes. So when they do their practice and then they go to work, work is nothing. So that's what everyone should really try to apply to their life. Amen. I agree. So where are you originally from? Originally from? That's a good question. Now, I was Africa. born. Okay, hold on. Yeah, what? Well, hold on. Don't get ahead of yourself. Hold on. Now, I was born in Georgia. <laughs> I was born in 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 South Carolina. Oh. But at the age of four years old, my family, we all moved to Connecticut. Gotcha. So I was raised in Connecticut, but I was born in South Carolina. So they had black people in Connecticut back then? You know, you, it's funny you should say that because when I was in the Air Force, that was the biggest joke I would get. It was like, they got black people in Connecticut? I was like, no, we're everywhere because you got to remember that Underground Railroad? Uh -huh. Yes. It was, go it was going north, okay? <laughs> it was going north, okay? If you couldn't stop in New York, you got to Connecticut, you couldn't go there, you tried to get all the way to Canada. But it was going north, so right. yeah. And them slave owners, um, and them slave owners was dropping us off everywhere. Well, no, the slave owners. Well, that's true, they did. But chasing. I mean, when we were when we were running away, yes, <laughs> we'd get as far away as we can because <laughs> we'll go someplace cold because they ain't gonna come here. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this question: How many brothers and sisters do you have, and are any of them in the music business? I am the youngest of ten. Wow. What? And yeah, yeah, 10. I'm the youngest of 10. And none of them are uh, or ever were in the music business. Wow. You know, it's a funny story. My brother, I have older, I had an older brother, three years older than I. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this, this slew of songs, right? These gospel songs. He was always in the quartet music. Right. And he sent me these songs because I actually I'm working in the business. He was like, evaluate these songs for me. And I got the songs and I read the songs. I said, well, you know, bro. It, they're too simple. They really don't tell the story. And, you know, because songs are supposed to tell a story. But I said that because I didn't know gospel music as well as I do now, because there's a lot of gospel songs that are just, especially quartet. You know, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Right. It's going to rain. <laughs> rough, rough, I'm going <laughs> rough side of the mountain. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, I had to apologize to him later on. I was like, I'm sorry. I was wrong because I was looking at songs like, you know, that tells a complete, complete. story. And he mm -hmm. was like, no, man. He was like, no, this is what I think will work. But unfortunately, um, I, I led him astray. Okay. It's okay. That was a learning moment for you, which which brought you to where you were able to see talent and to sign talent. What gave you the insight, because you are a visionary, to be able to collect and get all these artists on one label? That's that's, it that's goes, crazy. It goes back. It goes back to when I was ten years old, working in the record, working in this uh, record store, mm -hmm. and you know, and then years going by, working in that same store after I came out of the service wow. for my brother-in-law again, and you know, we would have um, a line of people come in every every weekend. And they want to um, pick out their uh, uh, music for the weekend. Right. So when you walk in, okay, so if LT walked in, okay, I, w I need to sell him 20 45s because we had a deal. You could buy five forty five for 475 So wow. I need to at least get 20 for, uh, uh, 45s out of you so I can get close to that 20 bucks you're holding in your hand. Right. So now I got to figure out, you know, what's going to move him or what's going to move Robert, mm -hmm. or what's going to move Michelle. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in, I have to, to evaluate your mood mm -hmm. and see what song to play for you, what artist to play for you, see what you're going through. You know, if a woman walk in, her head down, I play a little Johnny Taylor. Who's making love? <laughs> so, anyway. 
So is that yeah. where your DJ career? Because I r- r- word on the street is is that you was a party starter. Oh yeah, no question about it. The party didn't start until so I got, got there. there. The part, yeah, no. I um, after um, after I quit college, stupidly, I started uh, DJing in clubs. So I well, actually, I was DJing in clubs before I started, but uh, and that's where the whole name Jazzy, uh, you know, kind of like got elevated mm-hmm. because Hi, Jazzy. <laughs> yes, I uh, see. I got the I got the name because when I was in the Air Force, I was uh, stationed in Oklahoma City, and it was um, it was uh, it was one of those red light parties in the basement. So and then you know, it was, Oklahoma City was kind of hot, kind of warm. Not because it was a hot place to be, because it was just warm. It's right. hot right. in the summertime. So um, I was dancing with um, a friend of mine's girlfriend, and so she says. You know, it's too bad that I'm here with your with your boy because you're real jazzy. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went home. I looked it up in the dictionary, and it means character, someone out of the norm, not an everyday person. That's you. So, so when I started uh, DJing, I needed a name. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll be jazzy. So that's where that started from. And I, I started doing a lot of parties, a lot of weddings, a lot of, you know, playing in different clubs. If it was a club in my hometown, mm-hmm. which New Haven, Connecticut, then I was pretty much the DJ for it. And, you know, and that's where it elevated. So I went from from DJing parties to then going on to the radio. And I started at um, YBC, YBC, which was mm-hmm. Yell Broadcasting mm-hmm. Company. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 you know, became their program director, music director. And then uh, after about three years of that volunteering, by the way, and, and seeing that's what I want to give a plug here. Uh oh. Always, if you want to know something, volunteer. Yes, sir. And work with good people. Mm-hmm. Don't don't chase money. It'll come. Chase your passion. If you chase your passion, the money will come. Wow. So again, so they start a um, commercial radio station, changes format to urban contemporary and they uh they're starting up so i go over and i apply for a job they didn't want to hire me they said okay well okay finally they said okay we'll give you a job uh you can do overnights and i'm like okay it's not what i want but okay i'll do it so what happened was i go to the radio station that day and i'm bringing in you know, at that time we used vinyl records. So I'm bringing all my vinyl from home because I got everything because I was the music director from the college radio station across town. So I got all all the music. So I'm bringing it in, I'm putting it in the library and, and the guy that supposed to do the air shift I want from four to eight, he didn't show up. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. So now, so now they needed somebody. And they said, uh, since you're here, could you go on and, and do the show? So I did the show, and I never left the show until I left the station after seven years. So, you know, when God has something for you, mm-hmm. everybody else might as well just go sit down because mm-hmm. it's yours. Man, he would have been, been my friend. He would have been my best friend because the way he thinks is exactly how I've always thought. I'm listening to you, and I'm, I'm playing all of my memories back. I was a kid that would go to C.W. Dean's, who they thought could possibly be related to us. And I would spend my very last money on LPs. When I was in college at Philander Smith, couldn't hardly pay pay for nothing. When I got that little refund check, I would go right across the street (laughs) and and I would go buy buy records. And I would look on the back of the album, um, the LPs, and many people I've now become friends with who were people that I was wondering, who is this? Who is that? It's just crazy how your life... You know, one of the things that I love about Jazzy is that, you know, uh, I call him the temperature gauger Mm -hmm. because when you're a DJ, you have to gauge the temperature of the people and observe how they're going. And if you want them to move or do something, Mm -hmm. if you want them to be happy, you got the song. If you want them to uh, slow it down, you got the song. Mm -hmm. And I think that that (laughs) served you so well going into the music industry. Mm -hmm. So let's fast forward. Mm -hmm. Now, your, your first job in the not he in was the, secular too. The record, the record industry. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. 
my first job in the record industry yeah. when I when I left radio. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. You know, when I left radio, uh, I'm going to share something with you. It's a personal story, but I'm going to make it private. I'm going to make it. It's a private story, but I'm going to make it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Public. I'm mm -hmm. make it public. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so there was a. You know, me leaving radio was all about God. Mm -hmm. And what I mean when I say that is just that I had utopia. I had everything I wanted. I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm a black man with, the, you know, I got a nine room home. I'm single. I got, you know, my sports car. I got my, my bins. I, I got a great job. I'm loving what I do. I can interview anybody I want. I can play any song I want. I can do whatever I want. I got utopia. It's the only job I ever wanted in life. But then God said, you have to leave. Ooh. And if you don't leave, you're going to be destroyed. Wow. And I'm like, like, you're kidding, God. And God says, no. And then he, I, I went to sleep and, he, I, and I had a dream. And I saw the whole, the headlines. I saw everything, how wow. it was supposed to go down. Wow. So I go to work the next day, which was a Monday. And I called the general manager in my office. And I told her, I'm resigning. I'm out of here in two weeks. So she was like, what? I said, no, I'm out of here in two weeks. I'm gone. Okay, just from that. And as soon as she leaves my office, Monica Lynch from Tommy Boy Records calls me. Wow. And she says, uh, hey, Jazz, how's my records doing? What's going on? So we talk. And, and uh, so uh, before the conversation was over, she says, do you know somebody I could hire? to be our national <laughs> director of, of, of radio. So I'm like, yeah, as, as a matter of fact, I do. The opening just came up. <laughs> she was like, oh, I said, me. So she says, well, oh, she said, no, nah, you're kidding me. Because I, she knew I loved radio. She was like, I, I don't believe that. So she says, yeah, no. I said, yeah, I'm serious. So she says, OK, if you're serious, come down to New York and have dinner with Tom Silverman, the owner, and myself on Thursday and we'll talk about it. So I drove down, we had dinner, they offered me the job on the spot and I made the transition from radio to records. Mm -hmm. Okay. A national position, not starting in the mail room, not starting anywhere. That's purpose. But again, That's purpose. But again, when you're obedient and you listen to God, mm -mm -mm. yeah, there's a favor ain't fair. By God. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. So I went there and and uh, I was able to deliver Tommy Boy Records, their only number one billboard hit, which was Love is a House by the Four Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is house. <laughs> and, and Tommy Boy had mm -hmm. Queen Latifah, right? Yes. Queen Latifah, they had Naughty by Nature. They that, had uh, yeah. um, uh, De La Soul. Yes. Uh, African Bambada. Yeah. So you worked with all of them in their early stages? Yeah. Well, I left I left right at when they just had signed uh Queen Latifah and signed Naughty. I left to go to RCA at that time. Right, because they were part of her production company, I believe. Naughty yes. by Nature and it was. Yeah. And her flavor mm -hmm. flavor unit. Okay. Yeah. So then Tommy Boy went into gospel because you had Kim Burrell and some other people. Were you there? Yeah, that was that much, band? much later, okay. much later. Okay. Yeah. They went into gospel and actually, um, they hired, uh, Max Siegel, Max Siegel to come yes. over to run their, uh, gospel division. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so then, yeah, they had, they signed Kim Burrell, but you know, the strangest thing about that, they never finished a complete project on her. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing or another, right. one reason for another, right. they never finished a complete project. Right. Um, yeah. So how did you get to Zamba Verity? Well, I went to, um, <laughs> life is, life is, has a, a lot of twists and turns. Mm -hmm. So I go to, I go to Tommy Boy, I'm there at Tommy Boy, and then, you know, I'm doing radio promotion, but I'm not really loving radio promotion, even though I'm good at it, mm -hmm. but I'm not loving it. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why I'm not loving it. Because I had to do something that was really difficult for me. And that is, I had to really be real humble. <laughs> I know that sounds very crazy. At least you're honest. But, yeah. But, you know, when you got to go in and you got to say, hey, man, you know, you got to ask people to play songs you don't even believe in. Ooh. Okay. 
because it's your job, okay? It's not. It's not. Was my job to pick the song? It was my job to get it played. To push them, right? And that was. And that was difficult for me because I wanted to be in a position where, you know, uh, we could look at it this a different way. Right. We'll make sure we make a great record. Mm -hmm. Then you're proud of that song. Right. And then you don't mind talking about that song. But when you got to work songs you don't even believe in, then it's it, it, it's it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to go do that every day. So. Um, Tom Silverman and I, we had lunch and I said, hey, listen, I don't want to do radio promotion anymore. I want to do A&R. So he says, uh, OK, we have to work it out in the budget. But, you know, I need you to do radio promotion a little longer. So I take a trip out to California to BRE Music Convention. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm there and I'm walking down down the corridor and young man walks up to me that's running the music department, black music department for RCA Records says, uh. Hey, uh, you know, I like what you do. Why don't you come work for us and I'll double your salary? What? So I was like, okay, what do I, what do I sign up? Where right, do I start? Right. <laughs> so, so he says, well, when we get back to New York, I want you to meet with my boss. I'll set up interview and go meet with my boss. So I, you know, we, we went through that uh, routine, met with his boss, his boss says, yeah, this is my guy. I love this guy. Let's hire this guy. But what I found out later the guy that offered me the job really didn't want me. He just needed somebody to interview because he really wanted to hire somebody else. Wow. But he had to bring in other candidates for his boss to approve. Yes. And his boss approved me. Look at so God. Then, so, then, so then I get the job. But now I got a job where my boss don't even want me. Uh-oh. So, you know, so, so that was really, like, difficult. Now, I left something that was sweet and good right over a tommy boy and i go over here for more money but and now i'm like going through it right mm -hmm. but it was really the best thing in the world that happened mm -hmm. because see rca really didn't have any hits themselves but they were they were distributing jive records wow. and jive records they had kumo d they had uh will smith and fresh prince mm -hmm. and they had you know they had all the hits, yes. you know, care as one, they had all the hits. So we really just worked jive records as opposed to working RCA records because mm -hmm. RCA didn't have any hits. Wow. So I, so after um, the guy that wanted to hire me, he left RCA and he goes over to Polygram. Uh oh. And so when he goes to Polygram, then, you know, people working there really wasn't feeling me because they knew I was really close close with uh, his name is Rick mm -hmm. real close with Rick so so finally they were like oh, okay we got a problem you know so uh, I said I, I saw the writings on the wall so I left and I went over to Polygram with Rick <laughs> you know and I changed my career from radio promotion to marketing that's how I started doing marketing and then when I got over there I'm working with salt and pepper I'm working with um X Clan, I'm working with Will Downing, I'm working wow. with all sorts of great, great, <laughs> outstanding artists. Wow. And um, then Rick, after about three years, he leaves the company. You chasing them out, brother. You chasing everybody away. No, I ain't chasing them out. No, no, <laughs> trust me. I want to go with him wherever he's <laughs> right. going. But I'm like, uh oh, this is the problem. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you got so you gotta know, you gotta know who's got you and who does not yes. have you. It's important. You have to understand that because basically, if you stay in the wrong spot too long, you could be in trouble. Yes, sir. All right. So I get a call from Jive Records and they're like, hey, why don't you come over here and do marketing for us? We'll make you the vice president of black music marketing. And I'm like, OK, sure. So they have Joe, they have R. Kelly, they have Too Short, they got you know, a lot of different groups. Right. I'm like, okay, sure, I can do that. But when I get there, they said, we have this little label called Verity Records. It was just started six months ago by Demetrius Stewart. Yes. And Demetrius came to New York, she started the label, but then she didn't really want to be in New York, so she left the label went back to Nashville, Nashville and now they have, they have one employee. Mm -hmm. Her name is Jesse Thompson. Okay. 
she later uh, uh, became the manager of the truth and other people like that. And she's doing some really incredible things now. Mm -hmm. So uh, our first release was John P. Key. Your first on gold. the gospel side. Your first gold, right? Yes. And it went shot straight to gold. And then, you know, the business people saw that and said, whoa, we love this gospel music. Let's start building it. And so we hired um, Tara Giggs, Griggs yep. McGee to be the general manager. She came in as a general manager wow. because I was still I was still doing both. Mm -hmm. I, I would do I would do our Kelly marketing plans on Monday, do John Key on <laughs> Tuesday, do, you know, <laughs> do Joe on Wednesday, do Richard Smallwood on Thursday. So, you know, so I had to be flexible. I, I just couldn't stay there uh, right. full time. Right. And, uh, you know, and again, I, I believe that it was all God's plan because, you know, Tara, she was really uh, invested totally in the gospel community. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is going to be a problem because I'm going in here as Jazzy Jordan. And they're like, Jazzy Jordan, that don't sound gospel to me. So anyway, but anyway, Does you know, God know has Jesus? So, <laughs> so, so you, you signed, you had John P. Key first on Verity. Then you got Vanessa Bell. No, Vanessa Bell, the true story with Vanessa Bell, Vanessa Bell was the first gospel artist ever signed. Uh, but she was signed to Jive Records. On the Jive side. We, we, yeah, we put out we put Something out several several inside. projects with her pressing on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was all through through Jive. Mm -hmm. Because her manager was um uh Barry Hankerson. Mm -hmm. And Barry Hankerson was also our Kelly's manager yep. at one point. He was also married to Gladys Knight. Yep. And uh, you know, so he loved her and, you know, she was just, I mean, incredible voice, most incredible voice ever. Yes. Um, in my opinion. Yes. So uh so she was signed to Jive. And so when they when they flipped it and started Verity, she was the first Verity artist automatically because she was already with the label. Right. And I remember the duet that she did with John P. Key, something on the inside. That was when people first saw her on a larger platform because her other labels were smaller back in the day, but that's right. when people really started hearing her worldwide. Well, see, the story behind that is that she did something on the inside so strong first on her project. Mm -hmm. Then we were growing the label of Verity. So what we did was we did a, like, we are the world type project. Mm-hmm. So we had everybody on the song from Bishop Morton to uh, Donnie McClurkin. I mean, all these people were were totally uh, young at that at that juncture. Mm -hmm. Fred Hammond produced the track. Vanessa was on there, of course. Shirley Caesar mm -hmm. was on there. It was just so many. I I loved. I still love that song to this day. The way they did it, it was incredible. Wow. Or the way we did it. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. Um, sure. You are a mentor, you are a teacher, you are um, an advisor. Uh, one of the things that you had said to me uh, when we were talking, you said that you had a person that just went to the Stella Awards, just made, I think, Artist of the Year, Song of the Year, and at, you, they came back home and you had to release them from their contract. <laughs> let's, let's talk about you know the business side of the music industry versus the spiritual side of the music industry. Well, wow. as a matter of fact, you just had her on. Yeah. And that's Marette Brown Clark. And, you know, and we, sometimes you do people favors and, you know, and it's not even seen as a favor at the time, even though she took it that way. Right. Vanette, uh, uh, Marette has a heart of gold. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. Mm -hmm. We signed her. She was part of Vision, Richard Smallwood's group. Yes. And we fell in love with her. We did one project with her. She won uh, New Artist of the Year. But she was not, she was going to get lost at Verity. With that roster. Exactly. Yes, sir. So so sometimes that as you're running things, you have to evaluate, you know, different, different uh, where people are and seeing where you can take them. Because where she needed to be, she needed to be like she went to Air Records. Yep. And that was perfect for her because mm -hmm. they were small enough just to give her the attention, the attention that she needed. See, on Verity, you have to be able to hold your own. Mm -hmm. Look at your roster. Okay? I exactly. But I mean, when you have listen, when you have a showcase, when we have a showcase, yes. It's like you can't be up there trying to figure it out. 
You got to know, because let me tell you something. Bishop Hezekiah Walker, he is incredible. When Bishop Walker would finish, it was over. And we had artists that would sell more units than Bishop Walker, but we had to make him last because there was no more prayers to be prayed, no more songs to be sung when Bishop Walker was done. It was like time for everybody to go home. <laughs> and, and, and even with your roster, though, yes. it, it was so heavy and packed that even many of those reputable big names felt like they weren't getting their just due as well. Because one thing about the industry, they're going to go with the hottest hand. Well, you know, but listen, let me, let's me let look at it like this. If you have a large family, mm -hmm. you're going to have some kids, always have some kids that think that, you know, they're not getting a fair shake. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what? If, if you can't deal with, when you look at it, those artists, they didn't produce music as great as Kurt Franklin. Mm -hmm. They didn't put together a band as good as, as, except for John, didn't put together a band perhaps as good as Kurt's. And it wasn't about money. It's about creativity. Yes. And sometimes people have more cre creativity than others. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And then when you're... When you are trying to, you know, you got your your kids, you love them all. Right. And you want them all to to be great. But, you know, one may be a better basketball player than others. Right. And now the one that's not as good as the other one is like looking at it going, well, that's unfair because you just spend more. No, no, they're just well, gifted. That's their gift. Right. Well, let me ask you this question. That's good. What, what's up? You know, because artists have egos. You oh, know, really? And so, and the record owners do too. And so, um, <laughs> so when when you have an artist that has an ego, uh, tell me tell me a story of one of the the best, uh, you know, come to meet with an artist. Cause see, every now and then an artist will start feeling themselves. They yeah. come in your office and put their feet up on your the door. desk and, and everything else. Tell me one of your best stories of an artist that came in to correct you on how you was dealing with. Oh my gosh, we have so many of those, but uh, one comes to mind, uh, this one artist that shall remain nameless. Thank you. He comes to me and he says, um, Jazzy, uh, I want to get off the label. Let me off the label. And he's got about three years left in his contract. Wow. And I, and I was like, can't do that. Because again, he's making too much money. I couldn't let him off the label even if I wanted to. Because again, I got to go to my bosses and they're going to say, you out of your mind. <laughs> you know, he's making too much money for us. So, uh, so I said, I can't do that. So he says, okay, well, set up a meeting with me for the chairman. I'm like, okay. So I set the meeting with him and us for the chairman. He goes in and he says the same thing to the chairman. Hey, I want to get off the label. Can you let me off the label? And the chairman says, can't do that. And I can't let you off. And he says, oh, okay. So let's do the record. Uh, we can do the record in three months, you know, because he had another record due. And it was just like, it's like, it's like we never had the conversation. And so some what I noticed about a lot of artists is that sometimes it, it's about the pigmentation of your skin mm -hmm. of who's telling them something as opposed to wow. uh, what your job title may be. Wow. Because if the pigmentation of the skin is right, then it's like, oh, okay, I believe him. Then it's right. But I don't know if I believe you. And, you know, see, because it's, it's always amazing I would hear this. And this is when you always know that people really don't necessarily, I won't say don't trust you, but they're like looking at you like sideways because, you know, they would say, well, you know, if God put you in charge, then that means then, you know, you're in charge. Well, for you to even say that, that means you have doubts. OK. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, don't doubt what I know or what I do, because see, the see, the funniest part is. When um, I said to this one artist, I said, you know, I want to put you everywhere. I want your music playing everywhere. I want um, I want you. Uh, I want you in clubs. I want you everywhere. Mm -hmm. just, I don't want my music all the, all over the place. My music is not for that. Then I reminded him, I said, well. 
isn't it our job to spread the, to reach the good news everywhere? Yes. So to his credit, he thought about it and he came back to me and he says, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's try to do that. And we were able to do that for him, but it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. How, yeah, it's too many funny stories. How was it working with Yolanda Adams? Oh my gosh. Cause she just texted me. You're great. She said, he's great. No, no, listen, listen. I love Yolanda Adams. You know why I love Yolanda Adams? Why? Because not not because she's beautiful, not why, because why? she's tall, not why? because <laughs> because she is just so down to earth. I mean, look, from you know, we had her and we wanted to keep her, but she did the best thing in the world for her by going over and signing with the lecturer and working with uh, Sylvia, Sylvia Rome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and they gave her everything that, to be honest with you, we would have never given her. Right. Okay. We were not going to pay for Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and all these other folks to get on the record. And then when she did open my heart and just, just truly exploded and took her career and everything into another level, right. but she never changed. Every time I see her, it's like the first time that I saw her. Wow. She's always been, you know, you know, that big, beautiful smile and just warm and engaging. And, you know, it, it, it's like, yeah, she's just, oh my God, she's just a wonderful, wonderful person. And, you know, she's not going to, um, how should I say it? She's not going to talk bad about you or anything like that. Nope. She's going to, she's going to get it done. And she, if, if she doesn't, but listen, what I love about her, she's educated too, because she tell you, she'll tell you in an educated way. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That you know your, your stuff ain't right. But no, she is. Out of every artist I've ever worked with, she is someone that I hold in very, very high esteem because I've never seen her treat anybody poorly. Me neither. Nobody, no matter what their job title is or anything else. Well. I, I, I hate to hate to rain on this parade, but 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 one day, um, um, I just have to say, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you. So so Jazzy, let me let me do this because uh, we're, we're fastly approaching the end of this no. of this interview. I, we 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 have to. We got a, another show we got to get to, so we got to get down okay. to some things. Um, so Jazzy, uh, we want to have you back because we want to to do a full segment on. Uh, the new website and the new movement, but can you give us a snapshot of? Because I was going to, I was going to, I was going to say, man, I, I feel some kind of way because you know, I mean, you know, I made a mistake. And let me tell you what my mistake was. You know, I prayed to God. I said, God, expand my territory. And God says, okay. <laughs> hey. And so, and so now, you know, now uh, uh, there's a a new platform that I I. I you know, God inspired, I just put together to really help artists and it's called global gospel music.com. Yes. And, and the reason I put that together is because, um, I wanted to create a charting system where we could come and see what's going on. And it's no cost to the artist. There's no cost to anyone. You can come. I do, I do four charts and the four charts. I do one chart. I do is the top 100 songs played, you know, on on um, radio here in the U.S. And another chart is, uh, and that chart is only based off of 28 stations, okay, 28 monitored stations. I do another chart that's based off all 72 monitored stations. Wow. So, in other words, including your internet radio stations. And now you can see the difference because you look at that chart right now, uh, Marcus Jordan is number one with 1,500 spins on that chart, but um, um, uh, uh, Moore, what's her name? Uh, Lucinda Moore is number one on on uh, media base at 700 and some odd spins. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, you can see the difference in things. And then when you also look at it, there's another chart I do that's based on streams. And streams are so important because that tells you if you're really connecting with the audience or not. So on that same chart where Marcus Jordan is number one in one chart, he's down to number 35 on the streaming charts because he only has like 18 
thousand streams where where a um a cc one is has 10 million okay mm -hmm. so it makes a difference so again i i'm just putting information out there you know it's yeah. up to people that's to really... important though yeah. that's important yeah. because you could be number one and ain't and hardly sold any got any streams and that's and, the imp and no, that's and the imbalance you can, be no, you can be number one and nobody knows you Right, that's the imbalance. <laughs> Something's wrong. Exactly. Is there something wrong with yeah. that picture? Being in the industry as long as you have, shouldn't it be a balance to where it equals close to? That's that's what you that's what you want it to be. And let me tell you something. If you are a artist that's really promoting your career, what you want you want engagement from your audience and from the from you want people engaging in you because if people are not engaging in you, and you're just and it's great to get radio airplay. It's really really needed. But radio airplay does not necessarily, it's not the same for radio today as it used to be. I mean, radio is extremely important today, as always. But, you know, uh, now, you know, people are different today than they used to be. In other words, people used to stick around one radio station forever. Yes. All day long, waiting for a song to come up. Yep. Now they pull it up on their phone and just play a song when they want. True. Um, yeah. You know, so that's one thing that, you know, God is doing to expand my territory. Another thing I'm really, really, truly excited about is um, this new uh, venture that I just uh, joined on to yes. be the president of gospel. Well, I look, yes. I look, before you go there, um, I put sure. the, um, the website in your feed so everybody can check it out. That is globalgospelmusic.com, uh, globalgospelmusic.com. Yes. I want to shout you out because you actually launched your platform in the motherland in Africa and it literally took off there and now it's now being intro, uh, introduced to the United States. And so just looking at the website right now, he has uh, the top 100 gospel music. He has the international top 100. He has the top 40 radio streams. He has the uh, top 100 songs. He has radio radar and listeners countdown. So there's a lot going on on this website, but more than everything else, it is the newest tool to literally see how the industry and the consumers literally are looking and buying and streaming. And I just have to say it, CC Wine, y'all can say whatever she want, but 10 million streams followed by Jonathan Reynolds with 1, 1. 1.5 million streams followed by uh, uh, PJ Morton with one million three uh uh three uh, hundred thousand streams mm -hmm. followed by Ty Tribbett um and Lucia, Lucinda Moore. I mean I mean Tasha Cobbs. So uh this is a new tool and what he said is I'm providing it to you totally free. Mm -hmm. So this is a tool that the industry from record industry mm -hmm. to artists to you know uh Joe Blow can yes. literally go on there and literally uh you know like a promoter can go in here and say, Oh wow People are listening to this person, so let me grab this person while they're coming up. The while ladder. they're getting hot. So yeah. I want to applaud you on the new platform uh, because it is a visionary move. And, um, Thank and you. I want people to know about it, and we're going to continue to push it. I've been sending people to him left and right. Yeah. Yes, you, yes, you have. Thank you. So and, let's you know, talk see about his... the new venture. Well, hold on. Hold on. You, you got me started now right. because <laughs> there's a couple other things, too. I put up new ads every week. Mm -hmm. So if you got a new song out, you know, get it to me. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's worthy, then, you know, it will go on the platform. I'll give you I'll give you some shine. Um, yes. We also attach to a couple of Spotify playlists. So you get on the, those playlists as well. What's the name so of it again, again? People are asking, what's the name of it again? I just, I just put it Global in Gospel Music dot com. OK. Yeah. Uh, Global uh, Gospel Music dot com. And he can sing, too. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not get carried away. I, I know my gift thing. That's not it. Anyway, so uh, it's other, uh, this other platform that I'm really also excited about because I get a chance to really help artists mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And it's called Universal Royalty Exchange. OK. And what what's happening here is, you know, you. You, let's, we were talking about Yolanda Adams, for example. Yes. You take someone like Yolanda Adams. She has money sitting in Africa. Africa has collected over $5 billion of money that's sitting there waiting for you to sign up. Should she contact All, you? Should her manager them contact you? Should she 
as an artist, look for this too because she's established. But could there be money still for her there? Still, it's never been distributed. So I know there's money there for her. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. There's no question about it. It's still, shoot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, th she can contact me, her manager, or she can go right on the website. And it's, uh, you know, Universal Royalty Exchange. Okay. And, you know, there's a page called Join. And mm -hmm. you just fill out that page. It's very simple information. It's not taking a lot of information from you now. You just put referred by me. You can just put referred by Jazzy and mm -hmm. boom. And we will find out, you know, what uh, monies we have for you. But beyond that, let me tell you something else. Here's, here's, I'm excited for the Yolandas of the world, the Donnie McClurkins, the Kirk Franklins, all these people that I know there's plenty of money there for. But I'm excited about the musicians that played on those songs. Because the musicians that played in those songs, if you play drums for Yolanda Adams on one of her projects, then there's a great chance that there's going to be money there for you as well. So you should also sign up. If you're one of the producers for one of those projects, you should sign up. So everybody, you know, if you think, if you think you were, well, you would know you were on a great project, sign up, sign up. You have nothing to lose. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you a dime. And you can't get the money without signing up. <laughs> and so it's called uni Universal Royalty, Royalty Exchange. Exchange. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, and your job is to help them find money that's been that's been there that they haven't cl claimed. The money's the money's already the money's not lost anymore. The money is there. The money is there to be distributed. So my job is to help get the money distributed. That's okay. So in order for me to help get it distributed, what I have to do is notify people to come and sign up on the platform. And then, you know, then we can uh, do the little search, little quick search, and we'll see what kind of check we can write for you. Now, now Jess, you I'm asking, it's not royalty exchange. It has to be universal royalty exchange? Universal. Universal. Okay. Yeah. And this you want me to send you... I'm, I'm trying sorry. to put a link up for everybody, so I'm working on. Okay, I'll I can send, send you the link. It. I'll send a link to your okay. phone. I, he sent it to me a long time ago. I, I'll okay. give it to you. So, okay. this is for artists, musicians, and producers, and producers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, it to me, um, this makes my heart feels warm because, especially, especially musicians, because musicians, you know, they play on projects a lot of times, and and, you know, to be honest with you, they make a lot of projects, but they don't get the credit. And certainly they don't get the financial credit in a lot of cases. And I got you guys working this morning. You guys are working, just typing away, doing well, your I'm, thing. I'm sending, I'm sending this to 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 who we just talked about. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the thing about it is, like, we have, like, a Shauna D. And let me ask you a question. Oh, yes. We have Shana a Shauna D. D who yes. literally sung the hook. On a lot of Snoop's biggest yes, uh, it didn't get money uh, for uh, project and never received any money. Um, Sign does up. Supply to her. Sign up. Okay. So Sign Universal up. Royalty Exchange. Dot yeah, dot. In, yeah, he, yeah. He's gonna send you over. Uh, okay. the link. Robert, can you send it to me right now so I could get it up online? Because everybody's asking questions and okay. you know they got to be patient. And, 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 uh, and you. Well, no, say, I'm okay. gonna send it to you so as Arthur well. Arthur Benjamin, he done, he 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 done put it up. Let me see. If it takes us where we need to go, no, it doesn't. That's why I'm like saying, send it over to me now so we get the right. No, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm okay. okay. Uh, so basically, the reason why I'm doing this again, we say to you all the time, we are a resource, and um, a part of Jazzy being a part of God Radio, he is again iconic um, in how he has um, basically always maneuvered to the next level, always maneuver to the next level. And I appreciate him for it because he could be doing anything in the world. This is big. Um, this is big. he has basically said that, look, I'm going to continue to do the efforts of working with people to change their lives. And uh, Jassy, how does it feel, you know, and I'm not trying to be funny, but how does it feel to literally be a, a part of the fabric of, changing people's lives and that's what i live for mm -hmm. 
because, you know, see, it's one thing to be successful. And I've worked hard to uh, collect gold records and platinum records and, and you know, have gospel artists and secular artists win Grammys and, you know, make money and all of that. That's really great. Um, but, you know, and at one point I wanted to be the world's greatest radio announcer. Mm. That was my focus. But, you know, it all changed when I realized that I want to also, I want to be significant. Mm -hmm. I don't care what people say when my final days arrive. What I care about is what I know. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've tried to help more and help everyone. I've tried not to. I can walk in any room and feel comfortable because guess what? I don't do anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, look, I remember when um, I released Vanessa Bell Armstrong from her contract mm -hmm. and it was controversial. People walked up to me and said, how could you do that to a legend? But see, what they didn't understand was I did it to help her. Correct. Not to hurt her. Correct. Because she had had a number of records that did not do well for us. Mm -hmm. So she was unrecouped. So how could I help her? By putting out another record, I'm not helping her. More depth. Because because now she has to pay back all the money she owes us. Yep. Before she can ever make money. Yeah. But I if I release her, she walks away debt free. Yes. Which she did. Mm -hmm. Then she could go on, which she did. She went right over went right across the street to EMI and signed another deal. Mm -hmm. And started fresh. Yes. But she had all the legacy that we have brought her. So sometimes, you know, you're helping people and people don't realize it and see what you're doing. That's right. So again, um, see, it's not ever to me, it's never about what people say or think about me. It's what I think about myself. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's what it's, it's what I realize. you know, look, look, I'm, I'm not, um, you know, people ask me all the time. They say, "Why are you not in the in the in this Hall of Fame or that?" Or I mean, well, I ain't got nothing to do with me. That's on somebody else, you know. Because I know, I know who I am, but I know what I've accomplished. I know what I've done. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, Jazzy, having watched the Grammys, well, having had the Grammys because I didn't watch them this year, and knowing mm -hmm. that Donna Ross never won a Grammy, yeah, uh, I know. Barry White <laughs> never won a Grammy. Snoop Dogg, it's ridiculous. Snoop Dogg nominated 20 times, never win a Grammy. It's going to what you just said. Their work and your work speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Those awards are wonderful to be to be um, honored by your peers. But at the end of the day, it's what the legacy you leave and the life you have changed and touched. And that's what you have done and continue to do. Well, thank you. I'm going to say this quickly because I know we're going to wrap up. But listen. Be careful what you tell God to, mm -hmm. because I used to tell God all the time, it's not about me. It's not about me. And, you know, every year I would go to the Stellar Awards and I had a really, really nice seat and everything like that. And blah, 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 blah. I felt really good about myself. So one year I go to the Stellar Awards and I got a bad seat. And then, you know, this artist gets up and he uh, uh, on the label and he wins this award and stuff like that. And he won the, would not have won the award if I didn't push through certain things to make Correct. it happen. Correct. So he's thinking everybody that had anything to do with this project, but he didn't think me. Wow. So now I'm sitting there going, <laughs> the only the thing that I start laughing because I said, okay, God, I get it. You told me, I, I told you it, it ain't about me. So you, you didn't make it about me and now how you feel. And so that's why I said, be careful what you ask for and be careful what you say, because God is listening. Amen. And with that being That's said, powerful. we're going to be bringing Jazzy Jordan back from uh, time to time on the Wake Up Morning Show. But please understand, you can get him five days a week uh, on Health is Wealth right here on G.O.D. Radio 1. That's from 3 yeah, to baby. 5 every day, Monday through Friday. And he's giving you life's lessons, health lessons, 
And um, we are so godly proud that he is a part of our family here. He is, we, we, you know, he. I say he's my mentor. You know, other people will call him Uncle Jazzy. Uh, but the one thing that we do. Hey, love nobody call me Uncle Bachu. Stop that. <laughs> I call him Legend. I call him Legend. I call him Legend. But one of the things that we love about him is that what you see is definitely what you get. Yes, you do. Uh, and he is consistently innovative in mm -hmm. the platform and in this time and in this season so uh make sure you tune into a show you know you don't have to wait till the next time we interview him tune into his show trust me you know i know he has an effect because after he finished talking about how to clean your system and how to do this and right. how to do that right you know uh uh, uh, my wife come home and say, you know what? I, I was listening to Jazzy this this afternoon. And Jazzy <laughs> said that we need to do X, Y, and Z. Right. So taste this, and I'm like, hmm. That's the power you of know? good influence. Exactly. Power of good influence. And he's truly a friend. So, uh, Jazzy, we want to thank you so much. Thank we you. We want people to tap into you. So, how can they connect with you and 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 literally sit sit underneath some of this great information? Well, you can. Um... Send me an email at jamesjazzyjordan um, at gmail.com. You can, um, hey, here's my number, 917-975-1157. Make it ring. <laughs> right. Pick his brain like I yeah. do. And, and thank you for what you've done for my cousin Melvin Sanders. You don't oh, know how no, much listen, let, oh, th that oh, means oh, to oh, me. Oh, I'm telling you, man, oh, that oh, means a lot. Oh, let, oh, oh let, me, let me stop. Let me tell you something. That man right there. He's got a voice on him. That's my first cousin. That I, I don't care if it's your third cousin. Yes. I'm telling you right now. Yes, sir. That man, right? That man, you know how they say you can sing? That man can sing. He sent me this song. I was like, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. I, I don't know you. I'm telling you, that guy right there, when he comes out with this new joint, we're going to help, help him. him. Me, you, yeah. me, you, and Leonard, Dr. Thompson is going to help my cousin. Yes, sir. And we're gonna help your cousin. That's right. And then and then not me. because not because he's your cousin. Right, but, but we're gonna help him. We're gonna help him because you love me and we family. <laughs> all, all I gotta say is this is definitely gonna be two B continuous. Yes, this is a man, y'all. This is the this is the man. I call people legend, but this is the man. He he's that, he's and, so and inspirational. You know, let me let me tell you so when you get to be a legend, that only means one thing. That you, you put owe. the work in. No, it means, it means you put the work in. <laughs> well, ladies and All gentlemen, right, we want to thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Uh, the Barry you, Gordy of gospel. <laughs> as you know, uh, uh, this is a big day for us. We yes. got a lot of things happening. And if we didn't, I'll be on here another two hours yes, with we would. Dr. James. Yes, yes. Right. But you know what? I'm, I'm being strategic. Yes. You know, the bottom line, you want more of this? You want more of this? Right. Tune into his show uh, Monday through Friday. Health is well Health right is well. here on mm -hmm. GOD Radio 1. I, I, get well. I get you well. I yes. get you well. I get you. I get you. I get you well. And he plays music. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, 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 don't give me no doctor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all have a very, very blessed day. <laughs> yes, enjoy the weekend. The right. We will see you on Monday. Are yes. we here on Monday? Are we here on Monday? You know what? We're going to have to talk about because it it's presidential weekend, and we got all this stuff going on. Well, I only had one president. Huh? I only had one president. Praise the Lord. God bless you. So we, we I live in America, right. and because I live in America, mm -mm, mm -mm. you know, I got to call all of them out, but I okay, have one you. president that's you. that I love. That's you. You know what I'm saying? But, mm -mm. you know, I, I'll just let you know what that means. Lift saying. every voice and sing. You lift your voice and <laughs> sing, and y'all have a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful day right here on DLD Radio 1. Dot com. God bless you.